So we are here collected to look into the Gaia data release too. Just to start, uh, let me remind that we had the launch uh, 13, 2013, and then uh, in uh, summer 2014, we started the gathering the data. So one indication of that the data collection and data processing takes a time, it's good to remember that for the Gaia data release too, uh, the break line for observation was 23rd of May 2016. So that's almost two years ago. Uh, that means that we have uh, for the data release too, 22 months uh, of data, and it takes about two years almost to process and validate uh, the release. Now the release, uh, Gaia data release too, it will be really revolutionary in, uh, in uh, astronomy. Uh, we always uh, always said that the Gaia Data Release 1 is just a taster and the real thing starts uh, from uh, Gaia Data Release 2 onwards. And that's, uh, that's really also what our feeling is. However, I think it is good to, uh, to, to remember that if you look the publication records of, uh, based on uh, Gaia Data Release 1, so we have already at the moment, we are at the rate which is well above a refereed paper per day. So if that was a taster, I mean, I wonder what the Gaia Data Release 2 will uh, bring us. So what is in Gaia Data Release 2? The key thing is, of course, astrometry and my astrometry. That's really the thing what uh, you have to go to space. That's the motivation to get Gaia going in the first place. And we really go to billions now. So anticipation is that we get the so-called five-parameter astrometric solution for more than 1.3 billion sources uh, to a limited magnitude of uh, 21. And we are talking about uh, parallax accuracies of uh, at 15 magnitude to about uh, 100 micro arc seconds um, and, and, and much below. At 70th, we are at uh, 100 micro arc second and about 0.7 milli arc second at uh, the limiting magnitude of uh, 20. But it's not only the parallaxes, it's also the proper motions which we are getting and the proper motion uh, accuracies are of the order of 0 0.06 milliarcsecond per year for bright stars brighter than 50th magnitude, about 0.2 milliarcsecond per year for magnitude 17 stars, and 1.2 milliarcsecond for the fainter ones. That's really, it's, it's a, I think we, we, we don't realize yet what it means. It will make the whole uh, concept of uh, seeing uh, the uh, a star map on a screen when one puts everything moving, it gives the realization that uh, the universe is dynamic. But it's not only the astrometry, we have also the radio velocity spectrometer on board. And uh, in this uh, release, we make uh, first data coming out from that instrument. So it will be more than uh, 6 million stars uh, with uh, radial velocities. This is for the time being for the uh, bright stars. So between uh, 4 and 13 magnitude and uh, also effective temperatures in the mid uh, domain. So three and a half thousand to below 7000 Kelvin effective temperature of stars. It's really the, the start. And one of the reasons why one starts with the bright stars is that uh, for the spectroscopy, you do need more photons. And uh, in order to get uh, enough signal to noise to reduce the radial velocity and for the faint stars, we simply have to wait, we have to collect the data, then we really need uh, the years of data collection to get uh, something out. Uh, now then, the, we have something what we just uh, uh, mentioned by passing, we will have uh, 200 million sources where we have so-called uh, two-parameter solution. So these are mostly faint objects and simply we don't have enough yet observations to get the parallax and proper motion and uh, we are talking about uh, typical uncertainties of uh, two milli arc second. In addition to astrometry, for everything in, in Gaia, uh, photometry and astrometry goes hand in hand. When we make a astrometric measurement, we always get the photometric measurement. So the astrometric field, we get the, this broadband so-called uh, G magnitudes for all the sources which are published. In addition with the real uh, spectrophotometric part, we can deduce uh, integrated blue and red photometry. And this will be provided to at least 1.1 billion stars uh, in, the, in the release. 
Um, then uh, uh, we go also uh, to um, uh, solar system targets and uh, what we can do at this moment for the solar system targets, we can look known asteroids. So this is really hand-picked, uh, looking that when did we see and the numbers we are talking about are more than 13,000 and we get um, uh, CCD level observations and it will be for the first time that there are many of these objects, they have uh, uh, better positions than one milliard second. This is something also in the uh, asteroid community, something they have never encountered before to have optical measurements at that kind of uh, positional accuracy. Uh, one of the things is that when we have this uh, color information from photometry, then we can uh, address uh, issues of uh, astrophysical parameters. And one thing what will be done provided, uh, the main thing provided in the data release too, are uh, um, more than 150 million sources brighter than 70th magnitude, which will get uh, uh, effective temperature estimates. It's probably going to be quite uh, interesting to see how the community reacts to that one because uh, the strength here is not in the accuracy. I mean, it is still uh, typically a few hundred Kelvin accuracy is what we are talking about, but the strength will be that it's 150 million objects. And so one needs uh, statistical methods how to how to deal with it. Uh, yet in the uh, more in the data release is uh, uh, light curves for more than uh, uh, half a million uh, variable sources, C feeds, Ara Lyra, Myra, semiregular candidates. So here we have also a huge step from the 3000 variable sources in data release one. Now we go to half a million. Uh, in addition, we provide in the archive, we provide um, uh, also cross correlations for the most used uh, catalogs so that the users don't have to every time uh, do this. So we are talking about Hipparchus 2, Tiger 2, 2 Mass, Sloan Survey, Panstars, etc. Now then uh, moving from the uh, contents uh, into, into a couple of practical things. Of course, everything will be available through an archive, uh, Gaia archive, and the archive will consist not only on the data, but also documentation and uh, articles which have been published uh, alongside. So there is a full package of information which will help the users to utilize the data for the scientific uh, exploration. Now, data release two is uh, of course not going to be uh, the end of the story. Uh, we are actually already looking for the data release three in uh, 2020 and uh, also the final re release somewhere 2022 timeframe. But I also want to note that we now have a well working satellite in space. It's all nominal, very smooth. And one of the th questions to be asked is how long does this go on? Now in uh, space business, of course, you never really know, but uh, you do always look into consumables. And one of the consumable on uh, Gaia is uh, cold gas. And this is something what we need to keep the spin precisely what we want in order to get the high quality measurements. So this uh, cold gas we are simply using every day some 12 grams of it and you can extrapolate how long does this last and the best estimate at the moment uh, is that uh, we, Gaia will last till uh, 2024 about mid of that but there is a one year uncertainty in these uh, estimates uh, at this moment. So data release two is going to be magnificent we will increase the accuracy in the following releases. And I think uh, the prospect of having Gaia in space doing in total 10 years of measurements is just an amazing idea. And I thank you for listening to me.